And when you're observing something in the future and how it's carrying on, it's carrying on with complete intelligence and complete intellect. And when you're watching its characteristics, you can learn from it. And you can learn enough to, when even just drawing that symbol, a person is able to get way more than you can get out of a language that we're using today, like A, B, C, D. Drawing one hawk looking in a certain direction means something totally different to the people that drew those symbols versus what it means to us now. So you would have to be there. And that's why so many people have disbelief about these ancient cultures and what they were able to accomplish because they're not there. So they don't even have the wavelength to be able to assess what it was like to be in that situation so they can just judge it. And like, oh yeah, they weren't, they weren't smart at all. But yet, what we find is even deeper encoding in the chimera. A chimera is when the actual entity being shown has several different animals with it. Like it's a lion snake with a lion snake bird. And then you take all, well, what kind of wings? You know, well, how long is the fang? And all of those things begin to tell you a deeper story about something so specifically that languages like English could never get that on point with it. But even deeper than that, if some don't believe that this is actually true and it's actually fanciful, we find that what the Zodiac really here is it's a language within itself. And the earlier languages were developed by first tapping into the animal energy. And again, we're talking about complex animals, complex traits, moving with a form of intelligence. That's why they're giving them feet. That's why they have them, they're like human. They're like, yeah, we could draw you a pig. We could make you a statue of a bull. But we're talking about a bull human, which means we're trying to tell you it's moving with intellect. Now the ones you have in the past are like the seed forms of those guys. But these, they think, they have gained sentience. They're moving above the speed of light. Now, they don't look like us, but that's the whole thing with uniqueness. So just because you think you're the most intelligent one, that's the reality. That's the sliver you've con confined yourself to. That's why we don't see any other intelligent life forms out here because we've confined ourselves into a hack or a sliver that is allowing us to believe that we're the only ones. And because of that, as a collective, we remain in that sliver and we police ourselves from coming out of there. Somebody starts saying, hey, I saw, so even if you even tell a person you saw an orb, oh, come, you need to, are you smoking? You drinking some? I hope you don't start doing that. Oh, no, maybe we should take you to take a look. You're like, damn, I just said I saw an orb. I didn't even tell you what I saw in the closet last night. I, but see, the thing is, is that we are locked into a sliver to where we're the only intelligent beings, and that's a part of the hack. So in much of the zoomorphication and encoding, they're referring to the ones with intelligence. So you see an ibis with legs. You see a crocodile with legs. You see them in the stage of a human. So I'm just giving you a small example of how zoomorphication encodes and encrypts things. Because anyone else looking at it would be like, hey, they're drawing some statues. They're using some pictures with some, you know, like the animals with heads on them. We don't understand that. And that's because we're now still running around right now in Gaga Google phase, being kind of confused with the forms that are around us and what their true connection is to everything. So we know them for a fool, they remain foolish. And in this way, the knowledge protects itself. So with zoomorphication, it's not just a language, it's an encryption. So when they ran rolling in there, talking about, oh, they found the Rosetta Stone, and they're going to decrypt these walls, they didn't decrypt anything. The encoding of the traits, the colors, the demeanors, the commands, and a plethora of arcane knowledge is hidden within the symbol. And only one with depth 
with themselves, meaning you can't get some base vampire running in there talking about he's going to actually decrypt some high and holy knowledge. The interpretation that he gets is going to be from his own mind. <laughs> and that interpretation is not going to allow him to penetrate the depth of the knowledge because he hasn't penetrated the depth of himself. So in that way, the knowledge protects itself. That's when it's encrypted. See, now English is not heavily encrypted, but it's also encrypted language. The symbols don't mean what people think that they mean. So this proves to you that it was always standard. That even encryption within itself is when you move a symbol from the shape of its original, it already starts becoming obscure. So let's keep going with this.